Now, I, I will say this much. Let, let them ask questions. I mean, we're not hiding anything. I've heard so much negativity that I refuse to answer questions. Let them fly. I mean, okay. I'll be respectful okay. on my responses. I would hope they would be respectful in their questions, but please let them fly. We're good with it. You're not in trouble. That door's unlocked and waiting for you to come home. Your puppies miss you. Your family misses you. I miss you. Just come home. I just want my baby to be okay. I don't know where he's at. I don't know where he's at. Let's talk about the community because I want you all to know, even, even my church body, I mean, we're all praying. We're all praying for his safe return. Just when I thought the Sebastian Rogers case couldn't get any more sad, I heard an interview with Seth Rogers tonight on Justin of TikTok's channel, and I am beyond highly disturbed at what I heard. You guys, this is definitely a trigger warning. Sebastian has been through more than we could have ever imagined. There was another CPS incident in California at her house. Katie let Katie and Chris let a a child into their house that was five years older than my son. My son was seven or eight at the time, and this kid was thirteen. And She has a habit of not checking on her kid. I would never let some kid that's five years older than my son play with my, my son anyways. It's like, why do you want to play with my son? There's a five-year difference. That's a pretty big difference. You're 13, and my son, you're, you're a teenager. My son is not a teenager. He He's still playing with Hot Wheels and Legos and, you know... He's building things. He's playing video games. And you're a teenager. You go out and you have your own, you know, age-appropriate group that you play with. And they were letting this kid play with my son. And they weren't checking on him. And then this kid took my son's innocence. And he molested him. And there was nothing I could do in California because the kid was 13. But they let that happen. And they didn't bother to try to even get my son help until last year. Here, my son has just turned 15 in December. That means he's been dealing with an emotional, stressful, traumatic incident for the last seven years and I, i've been trying to help him i've been trying to get him help <sighs> going to talk to his doctor and telling them what happened and for the doctor to tell me she was like i knew none of this stuff and i'm like really because he's supposed to be seeing a therapist for this. And she's like, well, the, he's not seeing the right type of therapist for this type of trauma. I care about my son. And I just, actions speak so much louder than words. And there's just no justification for the actions that I have seen from them. They're not parents. They're not parents at all. And I want to know what happened to my son.
my son around his daughter. Because Chris has turned around into my mother, told my mom, your grandson's a pedophile. No, he's not. He's a victim that hasn't got the help that he deserves and that he needs so that he can get over the traumatic incident that has happened to him. That should have never happened underneath their watch to begin with. That's why Chris doesn't want my son around his daughter. Because he's scared that my son is going to do the same thing that was done to him under his watch. And Chris Proudfoot, if you're listening to this, you can't hold that over my head. I told you. You're going to piss me the fuck off. And I don't give a fuck who knows. It's your fault. It's you and your wife's fault. You guys don't deserve to be around kids. We're on a constant roller coaster ride. And he doesn't belong to nobody, but damn it, he's mine. And he's mine. Be sure to check out my other videos and playlists for more true crime content. And if that's not enough, you can join our Patreon. Don't have a tinfoil hat? It's okay. We'll make you one. It's that easy. See you guys in the next video. See you later. Bye.